Have you ever thought of a tool that will allow you to visualize anything you can imagine so that you can create any illustration you want in 3D to effectively communicate your science? Yes, there is one software. It is called Blender. Blender is a 3D animation software developed by thousands of people over the span of 27 plus years and currently being updated every single day. Unlike other 3D programs, Blender has no subscription fee or any other payments involved, which means you can use Blender for even commercial purposes. Blender founder Ton Rusendal once said it would remain free forever. So learning Blender is a lifetime investment for any science researcher or science communicator. This animation you are about to see was produced using Blender. Here you can clearly see the production quality is top notch. This means you can do modeling, texturing, VFX, rigging, sculpting, scripting, simulations and video editing using Blender. As a researcher or a science communicator, you may not want to learn all these features. But learning the basics of Blender itself will allow you to make 3D illustrations for your manuscript, thesis, research proposal, blog post, presentations, etc. For the past 6 years, I have been using Blender to make illustrations for the manuscript, TOC graphics, journal cover arts and animations for communicating scientific research. One of the remarkable features which makes Blender easy to use is its user interface. This is the screen that you see when you start Blender. It is user friendly and well organized. What I love the most about Blender's UI is its working space. You have ample space to work on your 3D models and animations. What makes Blender even more unique compared to other 3D programs is its community. There are so many people who use Blender for various purposes. Many are part of its development. Being a free software, people love supporting each other by sharing information on how to use Blender. There are good learning resources available online made by the community. Not only that, there are forums where you can post questions if you have any problems while using Blender. You will get the solution within few minutes. Recently, Blender got a big update. It was updated with a real-time rendering engine called EV, which makes rendering much faster than cycles. EV will help you to render high resolution illustrations in few seconds to minutes. Another way Blender will be useful for you is to make animations. Using animations is a great way to explain mechanisms and structural formations etc. You can use them in your presentations and social media. Not only that, while you submit your research paper, Journals ask if you have any multimedia files as supporting information with your research paper. If needed, there you can submit animations for better reach for your research. Many companies like Microsoft, Google, Intel, Ubisoft, Facebook, Nvidia are supporting Blender. This means you can expect more refined versions of Blender in the future. The team led by Dr. Graham Johnson at the University of California even developed an add-on for Blender called EPMV, which specifically focuses on the visualization of proteins and other structures related to cell biology. We can surely expect more updates on using Blender for scientific visualizations in future. In this workshop, our focus will be on using Blender for making 3D illustrations. I will show you all the principles, tools and techniques you need to create any 3D illustrations. In science communication, clarity is the key to success. If an image can speak thousand words, you better to have good images in your writing and presentations. So learning Blender is the right step you can take to become a successful science communicator.